get started with the webinar. So welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is James and I am the course advisor for the University of Manchester's LLM in International Commercial and Technology Law. Um, we're doing a webinar today on what is a DAO and how can it operate within the law. And I'm joined by Dr. Joseph Lee, who's going to provide some insights on today's webinar topic um, and give a little uh, presentation later on. And you can feel free to ask questions as we go through um, the content. Um, please feel free to use the Q&A function and also the chat function. Um, we'd love to hear where you're from, what profession you're working in, what industry you're working in. Uh, you can use the chat function to introduce yourself a little bit and we can get a bit of context of seeing where people are tuning in from today. Uh, that would be really good to see and we can hopefully engage with you a little bit more about um, you know, the content today and how it would be relevant to, to your job roles and, and your industries. So as I said, I'm the course advisor for our LLM International Commercial and Technology Law Programme, which is an online programme which um, Joseph here has set up for us. Um, and we have our first intake in September. So if you're interested in studying that, we'll have a little bit more information about that at the end of the presentation. Um, and also you'll see the study online uh, at manchester.ac.uk email address, which you can use to contact me for any questions that you have about that course and about applying to, to that LLM. Um, and I'll, I'll be happy to provide you with that information. Um, so yeah, let me give a quick introduction for Joseph today then. So you'll see here, uh, Joseph is the course director for our International Commercial and Technology Law LLM online program. And um, there's a little bit of information about Joseph's background here, but Joseph will be able to give us a bit of an introduction in a minute. Um, so yeah, it's great to have you here, Joseph. Joseph also has a couple of books out currently, uh, one on data governance in AI, FinTech and legal tech, and the other in crypto finance, law and regulation. So you can find those at the links below. Um, but Joseph, if you'd like to give a quick introduction to yourself and um, tell us a little bit about you and the, uh, the program that you've set up for us here at the University of Manchester. Thank you, James. Hi, everybody. Um, good afternoon from the UK and um, the course directors um, of this um, program. And uh, I also teach um, um, two um, units on this program. I teach um, company law, technology and, and law and financial law and fintech. Um, so today I would like to share with you and talk to you about um, a topic that I'm currently um, also uh, researching and that's um, DAO, um, Decentralized Autonomous Organization. So, um, so what is a DAO? And DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. And um, here we go. That's our topic. What is a DAO and how can it operate within the law? So first of all, I think, I hope that I have the remote control now. Oh, let me just um, set this up for you. Okay. I'll be able to go through the slides. If you just let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll click next. Okay, uh, next slide, please. So um, this is the outline of our, um, our, our webinar today. So we're going to look at what is a DAO, what are the technologies uh, used, and what are the aims and objectives of setting up um, DAOs, and are there any use cases, and also for, for us legal professionals, and what are the legal issues um, uh, in using DAO. And um, we, will, uh, we will then have a, a Q&A session uh, at the end. Uh, next slide, please. So what is a DAO? So DAO stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization. It represents a revolutionary um, social te and technological um, phenomenon, and especially in the forthcoming um, Web3 era. And these entities um, characterized by their uh, utilization of open source blockchain architectures give participants the unprecedented liberty to establish their own, um, their unique digital domains. 
there exists um, a growing body of academic literature showing the transformative potential of this innovation and could have um, impact on our um, economy and society. So the purpose of this study is to um, shed light on uh, the role of law and regulation and can play in supporting um, the evolution of DAOs. So our study will emphasize the organizational aspects of the DAO, um, giving the highly diverse and dynamic nature of DAO's technical and operational um, um, composition. It is important that we, um, um, we don't apply a one-size-fits-all uh, organizational legal structure to DAOs. Instead, the contemporary organizational framework should uh, help identify potential hazards. So from this point, um, we can facilitate the creation of um, innovation solutions um, to mitigate risks and to fulfill the distinctive, uh, the distinct requirements um, of the DAO ecosystem. Uh, next slide, please. So what are the technologies used? Now, DAO, um, 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 it's, it's uh, the, the technology that's, that's empowers, that powers decentralized and autonomous organizations is a, a blend of um, blockchain, smart contracts, artificial intelligence, and um, cloud computing, as well as microchips. So each of these components play, um, plays an, a, a unique and an integral part of the DAO ecosystem. But at the heart of a DAO, and we have the blockchain, distributed ledger technologies, a, a type of distributed ledger technologies, and this um, infrastructure serves as a common platform, removing the traditional structural barriers um, such as a ge um, geographical limitations and allowing the participants, allowing the stakeholders from across the, the world to actively participate. Secondly, smart contracts. Um, they act as the lifeblood of DAOs and um, facilitating um, massive transactions and interactions uh, from managing information, overseeing the voting processes and maintaining accounts to handling sales, managing disputes and enabling organizational restructuring. So by automating um, these processes, smart contracts um, can streamline operations and reduce transaction costs. However, um, uh, for smart contracts to perform complex tasks such as a text digestion and generation, um, uh, they they need to um, uh, they need to support they need the support of advanced technologies such as machine learning and deep learning. In other words, artificial intelligence, and these AI powered tools help extract insights from large data sets and um, giving um, an understanding of various contexts. And this is where the power of cloud computing comes into play. Now, cloud computing provides a critical um, uh, infrastructures and um, uh, data services, increasing the capabilities of machine learning and deep learning. And it ensures um, data is accessible, manageable, and ready to inform decision-making within the DAO and contributing to its overall effectiveness and efficiency. So in short, the technological infrastructure of DAOs is a concerto of blockchain, smart contracts, artificial intelligence, um, and cloud computing, and powered by microchips. Next slide, please. So now, what are the aims and objectives of um, of using uh, of using DAO? So um, DAO aims to foster a new era of collaboration and equitable sharing, um, transforming the dynamics of uh, stakeholder in involvement. 
the the traditional corporations, you know, have come under scrutiny um, for their inherent um, shortcomings, such as high operational costs, unequal profit distribution, and imbalanced risk allocation uh, allocation due to entity shielding. So DAOs represent an alternative um, addressing these issues uh, with a technology-driven approach. So the purpose of our study um, 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 in this subject and on this course um, is to not merely scrutinize um, the role of technologies such as regulatory technology, red tech, or supervisory technology, uh, sub tech in governance, but we extend our research into understanding how technology can stimulate collaboration, um, distribute uh, risks fairly, and to ensure equitable sharing uh, of outputs. So in short, DAOs are not just about mitigating the, um, the persistent um, agency costs um, issued in the current um, corporate structures, um, they serve a far more transformative purpose. Um, DAOs empower the congregation of diverse forms of capital and resources. Um, next slide, please. So, so what are the uh, legal issues? I think that's more relevant to um, to our um, to 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 our purpose. So DAOs operate in a complex um, legal and regulatory environment, and um, private law can give um, legal certainty to transactions. Regulations ensure a vigorous risk management uh, framework in place. And public law um, addresses um, externality issues. So there are various uh, risks are being envisaged in the uh, DAO ecosystems, including cybersecurity threats, market manipulation, money laundering, unfair participants treatment, market foreclosure, and potential stifling of innovation. And from an organizational uh, perspective, um, legal issues can arise around the nature of ownership and uh, 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 the nature of ownership and underlying assets. And these can arrange they can range from tangible assets such as inventories to intangible ones such as um, intellectual property rights and digital assets. Um, um, including bitcoins or um, stable coins or non-fungible tokens that we we talked about in the webinar one. And but the the the, the complexities around um, ownership and control uh, in DAOs um, will also need to be um, studied and investigated. Moreover, the allocation of risks and responsibilities represents a challenge. I mean, the questions arise are should the risk and responsibility be apportioned by way of individual negotiation by um, individual contracts, or can it be implemented um, um, through smart contracts? Um, and where do externalities, uh, where we see there are externality issues, and um, do they justify more public law interventions, such as through uh, digital taxation? So, um, so these are the uh, the legal issues that um, um, that we will need to address, and notably also um, the privacy issues and the data protection issues that um, can um, arise uh, in in DAOs. So, I think um, we should also look at the some of the use cases. Uh, next slides, please. Um, so, um, I mean, there are. Um, there are some use cases. Um, and say, for example, we have seen um, a number of um, DAOs, for example, maker DAOs, um, uh, some DAOs being used for charitable purposes, and they also there are, they are DAOs uh, being set up to um, to purchase um, the Constitution of the United States. So there are use cases already, but then um, um, I mean, an important thing for lawyers and for policymakers is to to design and craft uh, the legal frameworks that meet the needs 
and the specifications and the design of um, of DAOs in the in 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 the, in the ecosystem. So that's just a very short and brief um, um, introduction of DAO, and I thought that uh, it may be more useful for us to have um, sort of dialogue and conversation um, in, in this. So if you have any questions, um, please let us know. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, that is really great introduction to this topic and some of the legal aspects of um, DAOs. So we've got a few questions coming through. Um, one question here has come through about um, examples of smart contracts. And would you be able to show us an example of a smart contract in today's webinar? Um, I don't think you have one to hand at the moment, do you, Joseph? <laughs> um, it's something that um, I, would it be explored in, in the LLM um, online course further? Yes, I think I think one. Um, I mean, smart contract is a technological term. Um, smart contract. Um, a, a smart contract can be a contract, but not all smart contracts are legal contracts. I mean, and I think we can put it in this way: the it, the the function of a smart contract is for automation, is to streamline the um, the operations, and the aim of using smart contract is to is to reduce transaction costs. And smart contract can be used to, uh, for example, in um, um, in voting processes, and smart contract can be used to, um, for example, um, 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 to facilitate a digital reporting, um, for example, for regulatory purposes. Um, smart contract can also be used to, um, um, for example, automate some of the um, transactions um, in um, in um, corporate restructuring, for example. Um, so um, yeah, I think that's the that's the functions of um, of smart contracts and how smart contracts can 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 um, can help um, um, can help us um, in the operation in the corporate operation or in the DAO operations. There's a, another question here about um, what do you think of the certain U.S. states that are presenting themselves as DAO friendly for example, Wyoming. So I guess this question relates to um, yeah, US states, possibly even other countries that are, you know, recognizing DAOs and starting to almost welcome them into the into the business world. Yes, I think I think the um, um, I mean Wyoming, the state of Wyoming, um, um, is is it's it's very keen on 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 DAOs and creating legal frameworks to accommodate um, the the DAO communities. Um, I think that's what um, a lot of jurisdictions, for example, the UK is currently um, is currently contemplating the legal framework, and that's why the Law Commission is um, has also. Uh, also has a project and um, focusing on 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 DAO. Um, um, yes, and I think that's probably the the aim of Wyoming to to make it a a friendly state for uh, for DAOs and for um, DAOs ecos elite, uh, uh, ecosystem. Um, but then it, it will be then for the the DAO communities for the participants to to decide whether they want to use it or not, um, whether that legal framework um, is optimal or not, and whether that meet that legal framework meets the the needs um, of the DAO communities, and whether that fulfil the requirements of their uh, of DAO's um, community community. Absolutely. So um, there's some other questions coming through as well. Um, one here about how do you imagine DAOs and similar tech will either coalesce or run afoul of existing corporate regulation in the UK? For example, the Companies Act 2006 requirements. So is there any, um, how, how do you see this going in, in the UK, for instance, Joseph? Yes, um, as I said at the beginning, that uh, we probably don't want to apply a one size fits all legal framework or legal structure to to DAOs. 
Um, I mean, we talk about DAO, decentralized autonomous organizations, but there are different types of DAO. So I'm mean, using the existing legal frameworks um, to, to all DAOs. Um, that 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 is probably not um you know i think i think we need to think about it carefully whether this is what we um what what we want to achieve and then whether th that structure um the current the existing structure the existing company law structure is um, um um works for them and if it does i think that's um that for sure, that's the, the DAO community, the participants would use the, the existing company laws for that. But um, but if they don't, that means that um, we probably need different frameworks um, to to accommodate and um, to to make um, the communities um, or to facilitate that ecosystem. That's great. And there's another question here um, about you mentioned before about the US Constitution. Um, so it says, could you explain the constitutional DAO a little bit further? Well, it was it was DAO um, set up to to purchase the um, um, the the original um, uh, the, the the U.S. constitutions. I think it it it, it um, and then it, it was issuing an, an NFTs to to the uh, to the DAO tokens holders um, for that purpose of acquiring the original U.S. constitution. Um, but it didn't um, it didn't achieve that purpose. So there was questions: How do you actually refund um, 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 to the the DAO token holders? So um, I mean. That that was an example of how DAO has been used um, for that. But um, I think in um, I mean there are various um, um, purposes. I mean we we live in a very creative uh, society, and especially you know we um, you know with the with the help uh, of you know information and um, um, internet, you know we 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 have quite a lot of knowledge and information. Um, but I, I think that DAOs can also be used for, uh, for example, um, in supply chain management, and DAOs can also be used for data sharing. Um, DAO can also be used for um, 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 you know, sharing outputs um, in a more equitable way. And for example, in a renewable energy grid, um, and DAO can also be used um, to, to collaborate in, in a regulatory space and sort of um, um, involving um, the regulators, but also the uh, the regulated um, entities and individuals uh, for regulatory compliance. So um, um, yes, we have already seen um, many DAOs, um, and some failed. Um, but I think I think important for us to 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 learn from these um, um, these cases is, um, you know, what what are the technologies used in in DAOs and what are the purposes um, that um, we um, you know we can use DAOs for, and um, yeah, and obviously, and there are lots of sort of existing um, um, business operations they don't use DAOs, but um, but um, with the technology available and with um, you know with um, with the smart contracts, with um, with the technologies, with the cloud computing, artificial intelligence, and cloud computing data centers, um, you know these new technologies, you know, um, 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 I mean, the technology is not there uh, just for the scientists to, to you know these are not just platforms for scientists to get um, prices. Um, the technologies should be. Um, should be made available uh, for for businesses and for um, for the um, uh, for the for the commercial world to to use and to um, to better our lives. Absolutely. And um, there's another question about unwrapped DAOs. So the what is your view of the legal form of an unwrapped DAO um, in the UK? Yes, um, I think I think that's um, the, the question is that what what kind of um, what what should be the the legal form for DAO? I mean, if 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 company law, you know, if the company um, legal structure is used for DAO, then you know, the, in how how assets should be dis, uh, distribu distributed, you know, after uh, the about um, after the DAO has been let's say insolvent using company law. Um, uh, 
um, terminology, then you know, company law um, should be followed. But um, but the question is whether company law is suitable for uh, for DAOs. And um, if it is, then yes, we can use company law to solve the issues. But um, if they are not, then maybe we need to think about a different um, different solutions, different uh, legal solutions, and we need to different um, frameworks to um, distribute. Um, the assets, um, you know, according to the allocation of risk and the responsibilities agreed. Certainly. So there's another question about um, following up on previously we we're talking about the um, the question on how how DAOs will either follow or um, run afoul of the existing court regulation. So follow up on this. It talks about um, the wild west um, of, of DAOs and, and this technology and um, the little protection people have for token holders, uh, little protection for token holders um, in this case. So um, do you see do you see that changing? Will, will, will regulation perhaps help uh, protect token holders further or do you see it carried on in a sort of wild west manner as it is at the moment? I certainly think that you know, token holders should be protected because otherwise you would not have you would not increase um, participation and you would not scale up um, the uh, the use of DAO. So I think it is important. I mean, think about you know why do we protect the shareholders? Um, and, you know, we protect the shareholders to increase participation. We protect um, we protect um, the stakeholders in order to increase their participation. So equally, you know, we do need to protect um, token holders. Um, and for the um, for for the DAO communities to 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 grow, and um, I think the question is now how do we regulate? I think that's the that's 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 a difficult question. And do we um, do we regulate um, DAOs uh, like we regulate um, companies, or should we use a different um, approach to regulating DAO? Um, should it be more um, technology driven approach to regulate? out absolutely so yeah i mean it's um these are all really good questions if you have any more please feel free to ask and i think that um the more we discuss into these topics that we're starting to get into some content that's covered in our llm um online llm international commercial and technology law program um, so if people are interested in, in this, I'll just provide a little bit more information on that. Um, so I'll just share my screen. Um, so Joseph is the course director for this LLM program, which begins in September. Our first intake of students will start this September. Um, it's a fully online part-time LLM. Um, and you can complete it within two years. Um, and we recommend around 15 to 20 hours of work per week. Um, we have an early application discount of 10%. So the deadline for that is June 26th. So if you um, submit an application before that date, you will automatically qualify for that uh, discount. There's also scholarships and bursaries available. So do get in touch. If you're interested in those, I'll be able to provide you with more information about how to apply for those. Um, and we also offer a payment plan for the fees uh, where you pay in installments to help manage the cost of that. Um, but yeah, it's a really exciting course. And I think that, um, you know, it's, it's such a pioneering and innovative area that, um, you know, this course it really is going to prepare a lot of um, legal professionals for for the future of um of you know technological development and how that impacts the law so i think um it's a really exciting course for for people who are interested in that and so if you're if you want to learn more about that please email me at studyonline at manchester.ac.uk um where you can also arrange a consultation with me uh, we can discuss the application process the course uh, fees funding all of that as I mentioned, that we have an early application deadline on um, the 26th of June. So if you are interested in applying, do make sure you get your application in before that date. 
Um, and also, this is an opportunity for people to ask questions um, about the course. So feel free to um, share any questions you have in the Q&A about that. And um, Joseph and I will be happy to answer those now. If you don't have any questions now, we can also uh, answer them by email. Um, just feel free to email me at any time. Um, I think, let me have a quick look. I think we might have some questions coming through. So we do have, um, so talking, I guess this follows up on, on what we've talked about today. Um, about the about the DAOs that we've looked at um, in today's topic. So I guess the question would be, how can this course provide um, legal professionals with knowledge of tech such as such as DAOs and also provide them with legal skills to excel in these new fields of law? So Joseph, would you be able to share some insight about how this course can provide people with with that knowledge and skill set? Yes, um, so um, we, uh, on, on this course, there are four um, compulsory units, so uh, you will be doing, um, you'll be doing, uh, you'll be doing company, uh, company um, technology and law with me, financial law and financial technology, fintech with me, and um, there's a course on, there's a unit on um, data protection and privacy rights, and also intellectual property uh, in the new um, digital ecosystem. And in addition, you also need to complete an individual project. So you would choose a topic, for example, you can write um, a dissertation and individual projects on DAOs or on blockchain or on, um, for example, disinformation um, online. And, um, and, and, and then through that, um, you can engage in debate um, based on the, the information available and then to, to keep up um, um, with the, the technological advancements. And for example, as I said, um, in, in, um, um, for, my, for my units, we'll be looking at um, how technologies will be used in, in, uh, for, for business organizations. Um, for example, you know, how blockchains may be implemented artificial intelligence and smart contracts and data centers, data, data computings may be used in business entities, but what are the um, associated risks and how do we use law and regulation to, to mitigate uh, the risks? So it is not just um, you know, for um, you know, sort of implementing the rules and laws. Um, I think there's also a high level sort of um, policy debate on, on you know, how do we use technologies um, ethically um, to, to, um, for, 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 for improving um, and the economy and the society. So, and then how do we actually translate you know, these you know, sort of high level policy um, arguments into rules? Perfect. Thank you, Joseph. Yeah, um, there's been a couple of questions about the the format of the course, about the online format. So I'll just quickly answer that. So it's it's a fully online program. Um, some questions about do you need to come to Manchester to study? Um, so no, that wouldn't wouldn't be required. It's fully online, um, and you can do it from from wherever you're based um, in the UK or in any country around the world, any time zone. It's available to to anyone online um, fully. Um, so that's the real, the real nice thing about this course. It's really flexible. It's um, it's available to people all around the world, and you can carry on, carry on in your your legal profession while studying at the same time. Um, and it's a real good supplement for people interested in these these topics and expanding into these these legal areas. So. Um, if there's any further questions, uh, you know, feel free to email me. I'll just put up my my contact details again, uh, just to remind people there. Um, it's the study online at manchester.ac.uk. Um, feel free to get in touch there, and uh, we can always arrange a consultation to discuss the course further. Um, I think we've pretty much got to the end um, of everything we'll talk about today. So um, thank you, Joseph, for your time. And thank you, everybody, for joining us. It's been a pleasure. And there's been some really interesting uh, discussions there. And um, we hope to have some 
some more discussions going forwards and have you um you know apply to our course and and expand on these these topics uh on the course so thank you for attending thanks joseph and uh bye for now thank you everybody and look forward to see you soon bye